20 years ago when I became trained as a psychotherapist, I was exposed to a number of different theories. And whenever I heard about object relations or psychoanalysis or psychodynamic theory, I was always intrigued. I was always thoroughly confused. I was thoroughly confused about a lot of things about therapy back then, but I was particularly confused about psychodynamic therapy or psychoanalysis or object relations. And, but, but at the same time, I knew that there was something I liked about it. There was something that seemed to resonate with me. And when I was in graduate school, getting my master's 20 years ago, I was asked by instructors to choose one theory to identify as a theory that I wanted to know more about and I wanted to investigate and research and, and try to apply to the clients I was seeing at my internship. And I chose object relations and specifically object relations family therapy. And ever since then, I have made it a point to learn more about it and to understand it more. And the more I learn about it, the more I like. There's certainly a lot of things about psychoanalysis, particularly classical psychoanalysis, that is quite silly to me, but there's a lot of it that I really, really enjoy as a therapist. And at my university, I'm sort of known as the psychodynamic guy. When people want to know more about object relations and psychoanalysis, they know that I'm the professor that knows about such things. And so... Um, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but just so you know how how dedicated I am to it and how well known it is, I suppose. And then uh, I've I've been since I started the podcast, I've been getting a lot of requests to talk about psychodynamic theory and other kinds of things along these lines. And then Patron Danielle emailed us. Patron Danielle has been a a loyal listener for a long time. She contacts us often, and we enjoy her emails quite a bit. She is a psychology student, and she wrote in and said, wrote, she wrote, I would love to hear a podcast about psychodynamic theory. I know you have talked about psychodynamic theory in previous podcasts, and my favorite was the psychodynamic formulation episode, and I would love to hear more. She also writes, this is by far my favorite podcast, with an exclamation point. Well, today you're our favorite patron because you are a patron. If you want to become a patron, make sure you go to patreon.com. Today, I'm going to talk about psychodynamic interventions in particular. Today, I want to talk about what psychodynamic therapy or psychoanalytic therapy or object relations therapy, what, is, what does it actually look like? How, as a therapist, can you be within the school of psychodynamic therapy? <laughs> That's a poorly design sentence, but I hope you get what I mean. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the theory, but mainly I'm going to talk about the technique, essentially. A psychodynamic therapy doesn't really lend itself to talking about specific techniques. It's more of a, a general theory that guides treatment, and it can look quite different in the hands of different practitioners, but I'm going to attempt to explain it today. And also, you should know that this is my own particular integration of the various different areas that would be classified under psychoanalysis or psychodynamic theory. It's particular to me, and it will be described in my particular way. It's another reason why I kind of like it, because every psychodynamic therapist is different and adheres to a different set of assumptions and behaves in different ways. And so it's an art form when you're applying psychodynamic therapy. And Along those lines, I should say that it's a little tough to explain this to people, particularly if you're not a therapist, and, partic and particularly if you're not an experienced therapist. For experienced therapists, they will probably understand, if you're not a psychodynamic therapist, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. So um, my recommendation to you novice therapists out there is perhaps re listen to this episode later on in your career, <laughs> if you can remember such things years from now. And, and maybe it'll make more sense to you if it doesn't make as much sense to you right now as it could. The reason why I'm telling you this is because when I was a novice therapist, psychodynamic theory, like I said earlier, was, was really quite confusing to me. And, and until you actually have uh, long-term th clients and, and experiences with different personalities, it's hard to know what I'm talking about. But again, I'm going to do my best. Welcome to the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, 
Dr. Kirk Honda. I am chair of the Couple and Family Therapy Program at Antioch University, Seattle, and I'm also a licensed therapist. This episode is just for patrons of the podcast. So if you're listening to this and you're not a patron of the podcast, this episode will end before the content begins. If you want to hear the full episode, you have to become a patron of the podcast by going to patreon.com.